Hi everyone. Welcome back to the channel, heading to Qatar 2022, where someone with more than 15 years living in Doha, me, will tell you all about the country in preparation for you coming to visit for the 2022 World Cup. In this video, I'm going to discuss the Metro, which will become very important to you for visiting the stadiums in the World Cup. Now, the Metro is quite new. It opened up maybe three or four years ago, just before the COVID pandemic, if I recall rightly. And because it's new, it's very nice, it's very modern, um, very spacious, but there are only three lines at the moment. Now, those three lines cover a lot of distance. They go from the north of the city all the way down into the city of Al Wakra in the south and out into the suburbs uh, close to some of the stadiums. In fact, the initial uh, metro lines were based on that they would finish off where there would be stadiums for the 2022 World Cup to allow people to use the metro to get to the stadiums. Now, not all of the stadiums are on a metro link. However, based on the experience from the Arab Cup back in 2021, for the stadiums that are not at a metro station, they will have buses or other forms of transportation to get you from the closest metro station to those stadiums. So if you can, try to have your accommodation near a metro station, because you will be using it a lot. It is the easiest way to get around the city. Importantly, the metro does go to the airport. So you'll be able to use it to go from the airport to your accommodation and back. Um, unlike some other metros, such as Dubai, which didn't allow luggage, maybe they've changed, I don't know, but uh, back in the day, they didn't allow luggage. The Doha Metro does allow luggage, so you can go from the airport, straight on the metro with your luggage and head to your accommodation, which is great. I use the metro a lot to commute uh, to and from work. I find it very convenient and it's, actually about as fast as uh, driving, you know, cause especially with the rush hour traffic and stuff, it's, it's an easier way for me to get from uh, my apartment to the office. Now, in the summer when it's really hot and you don't wanna be walking around too much, it can be a bit of a problem going from a metro station to wherever you wanna go. But for the World Cup, you shouldn't have to worry. Temperature should be in the mid 20s, maybe even into the low 30s. So it's not too bad to be walking around neighborhoods and things. In terms of the timing, the Metro typically starts around 6 a.m. and goes to 11 p.m. sometimes later on the weekends. But don't worry, if you're attending a 10 p.m. game, they will keep the Metro open late so that people leaving the game can get home. They did this last year for the Arab Cup because again, the government is trying to encourage people to use public transit to get to and from the games. So don't worry, they're, you're not gonna go to a 10 o'clock game and then find out the Metro closed at 11 and then you're stranded. They're definitely gonna keep the Metro open so that you can get back from that game. One of the things that they did during the Arab Cup was that they made sure there were signs everywhere um, telling you which stations to go to to reach your match. Whether you were on the train, the display screens would uh, show you what games were playing that day, what metro line you needed to be on, and what stadium you had to stop at to be able to attend the match. Also, at the train stations, there were signs that they had posted up on the walls with the name of the stadiums and arrows pointing you to whichever metro track you had to go to to make sure that you were on the right train heading in the right direction. I'm sure they will do that again, which will again make it very easy for you to find the right station to get off at to go to the game. So in terms of how to use the Metro and the pricing, I will take a moment to explain the Haya card, which I believe if you have bought tickets, then you should download the app called Haya. You'll be able to find it in app stores. And from there, that'll give you an idea about Qatar and places to visit and so forth. And, and your tickets, I believe, will be there. Now, I have heard a rumor, 
I don't know if this is going to be true yet or not, that you will be able to use the Metro for free using the Haya card, whether that will be for the length of the tournament or only for the days that you have tickets for matches, I don't know. Um, and it is a rumor that this will happen anyway, but the rest of the information I'm going to give you is based on that that rumor is not true because I'm going to discuss the prices for things and so forth. So we're just assuming that um, this is in case the Hey app is not going to give you a free ride on the Metro system. Now, to use the Metro, you will need a Metro card. The Metro does not take cash. You will have to use a Metro card and then you load credit on it and you use that for your trips. Um, here is my Metro card. Pretty straightforward. Um, you can buy this at any station. There are counters where you can get the ticket or I believe you can also just buy it straight from the machines there. The card costs 10 riel. And then from there, you load credit on the card. This is similar to, I think, many other metros such as uh, Oyster Card for the London Underground and so forth. And then by loading it up, you then can go through the gates to use the metro. Now, the price of the metro is very straightforward. It is two cuttery riel for each trip, one way. It does not matter how far you travel. There are no zones in the Qatar Metro, unlike um, in other metros where, you know, there's various zones and you pay more based on the length of uh, travel, but not uh, Qatar. It's two real, whether you go one station or whether you go from one end of the metro to the other. Um, you even can change lines. You will not pay extra for that. So you can go from Al Wakra all the way at the end of the red line, all the way to the end of the green line, for two real. It's actually a, a really good deal. I mean, it's way cheaper than anything else. It's way cheaper than taxis, way cheaper than even the gas you would pay to drive that distance. But it's two real any trip. So even if you just went to the next station, it would still be two real. Now, it's simple. Two real. That's why I'm wondering whether the Haya card rumor will pan out or not. Because really, two real a trip, is a, that, that's really not that expensive, right? Yeah. So, very affordable and uh, very easy to do. Now, every train has three different classes of car. Um, in the front of the train will be what's called the gold car. This is for people who buy a gold class ticket. Now, I've just said it's two real a trip, and I'm basing that on the regular price. But if you want to travel in gold class, it's 10 real a trip. So it's a lot more expensive. You're paying five times. Of course, the car is much nicer. It's much more comfortable. There will be fewer people on it. I've never traveled in it, so I, I couldn't tell you for sure just how nice it is. But yeah, very few people use it, so I'm sure the car is fairly empty. Um, the next car is what is called the family car. And this car is only for ladies or for families traveling together. And by and large, it's just used by ladies. So you could almost think of it as a ladies only car. But in truth, if you are a family, then men can go on the car as well. Um, they're pretty strict about this. So uh, guys, you're not allowed on that car unless you're with a lady, okay? Don't do it. Plenty more cars are what we call standard class, which is uh, the rest of the train. And that is for everyone, but in truth, because there is essentially a ladies car, you'll find very few ladies in the standard class and it's pretty much all men. And I think that makes it even a little more uncomfortable for ladies, like the, they could get in a standard car and see that it is just all men, so then they quickly head to the ladies car. Anyway, I stick to standard class because it's too real a trip, it's comfortable enough, and it gets the job done. Now, from my recollection, there are three stadiums that you cannot get to directly from the Metro. And those are the Al Janoub Stadium in Al Wakra, uh, Al Thumama Stadium in Doha, and the Al Bait Stadium, which is in a northern city called Al Khor. None of those three stadiums have their own metro station. However, like I said before, 
there will be shuttle buses or some way to get you from a specific metro station to that stadium. I believe the longest journey will be to Albate Stadium. You have to take the red line all the way to the end, and that is Lucille, uh, the Lucille Station, where, surprisingly enough, the Lucille Stadium is. So if you have tickets to the Lucille Stadium, that's where you go. But if you're going to Albate Stadium, you're then going to have to get on buses or transport and go about 40 kilometers, I think, maybe 30, 30 to 40 to get to Albate Stadium. So if you're taking the Metro and public transit to get to Albate Stadium, you definitely need to leave extra early because it's going to take some time for you to get there from Lucille Stadium. As for the other stadiums, Al Janoub Stadium in Wakra, you have to stop at the end of the red line to get to that one. And uh, Al Thumama Stadium, I believe it will also be a station on the red line that you have to get off of to uh, take shuttle buses to that stadium. However, there will be signs everywhere at the Metro telling you what station you need to get off at to get to the match. So don't worry, you'll be able to do it. And the other two stadiums aren't too far away. I think Altamama's maybe about three kilometers away from the station and Al Janoub will probably be about five kilometers away from the station. So it shouldn't take you too long to get there. All the other stadiums, whether it's Khalifa Stadium or Ali bin Ahmed Stadium, Ahmed bin Ali, I think it's Ahmed bin Ali Stadium, um, Education City Stadium, uh, Stadium 974, Lucille Stadium, they are all within walking distance of a metro station. So you can just take the metro there, get out, have a little bit of a walk, but it, it's pretty easy. I've been to three of those stadiums um, by Metro for the Arab Cup and it worked great. Um, and those stadiums for the most part were full or nearly full. So, so it was pretty good handling the volume of traffic. The uh, Metro cars were packed with people though. Naturally, thousands of people are heading to these games. But we all managed to get there on time and there wasn't really much in the way of hiccups. Hosting the Arab Cup in 2021 gave Qatar the opportunity to really test out whether the Metro system was capable of handling the large crowds heading towards the stadium. And by and large, it worked out pretty good. I'm sure if there were any hiccups, they're gonna now remedy that for the World Cup in the hopes that things go much smoother. And so everyone, fingers crossed, will have a fairly easy time using the Metro to get to and from your games. That's all I have to say about the Metro. If you want more information, they do have a website. You can just Google up, you know, the Cotter Metro website. I believe it's by a company called Cotter Rail. There you can get more information about uh, the Metro card, uh, the stations, the route map, Although the route map's pretty straightforward, there's only three lines and they only cross at one station, uh, a station called Musharab. That's where all three lines meet. Um, so it's very easy to use. Try if you can to have your accommodation be close to a metro. I'm telling you, it will really help you out a lot and will make your trip much easier. I hope you're planning your visit and we'll see you in November. Bye for now.